The Town of Farmington. Respecting history, planning the future. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the March 8th meeting of the Town Council and ask you all to stand. Gary, would you lead us to the pledge of allegiance? Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. Liberty and justice Tonight, the first order of business, we have no presentations or recognitions. The first order of business will be our public hearing on the budget, and I will have the town clerk read that. But before I do, I just want um, to say a couple of things. One that um, tonight is the beginning of the um, the beginning of the budget process for us, um, and what it is is it's the public hearing. We'll have the budget presented. The town manager will present the budget, and um, the superintendent of schools will present the budget as well. And then we will open it up for questions and comments. But um, it will be the time when the public will come and give us information or ask us questions and. The town council does not respond at that time. We listen to your comments and, and questions and uh, possibly information that you may, you may uh, want. Um, but we don't respond tonight, we listen. And in the next, and we will continue then with the rest of our meeting after the public comment and after the public hearing. In the next few days, we are going to be going through the budget um, section by section of uh, our town manager budget, uh, town manager's budget and the board of education budget. Uh, tomorrow will be at four o'clock, the Board of Education will present to us. And there, at every day, we have public comment. So you're welcome to come every day that we do have the budget process, which is Wednesday and Thursday at four o'clock. And we continue on until we finish um, our agenda for the day. We also will continue with the budget on Saturday, beginning at nine o'clock. And that will go throughout the day um, till we get to a, a point where we're, we're done for the day or done with the budget. If we need to, we will go come back on Monday and Tuesday of the following week. In the last few years, that hasn't happened. But just in case we do, those days are set aside for budget. And um, we'll know more as we go through the process as to how long it'll take us. But generally, um, it goes through Saturday anyway. So um, I just wanted, that, wanted you to know that right from the onset so that you're not um, wondering why we're not responding to things. But the council's just listening to me. Paula. A public hearing will be held on Tuesday, March 8, 2016 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers on the Town Manager's 2016-2017 recommended budget. Dated at Farmington, Connecticut, the 17th day of February, 2016. Kathleen A. Egan, Town Manager. Good evening. Farmington Town Council and members of the public. I present for your review the town manager's recommended budget for fiscal year 1617. This budget is proposed, as always, with the town of Farmington's vision statement in mind. The town of Farmington's vision statement is that Farmington will be recognized as a historic and progressive town with an engaged citizenry committed to the betterment of the entire community. To that end, high quality services will be provided to a diverse population living and working in a balanced blend of open space and residential housing and commercial properties supported by stable and <coughs> equitable revenues. The general fund budget includes the recommended spending for the town, for the school system, for debt service, and for capital improvements. The recommended budgets for Westwood's golf course and the recreation fund and solid waste collection and disposal are also included for your review. The town council set a target in which the town expenditure portion of the budget would increase no more than 2.75% to 3.25% above current expenditures. Along with the town council's budget target, the town's strategic plan and the town council's capital improvement policy were the policy guidelines at the forefront when formulating the budget. The budget building process focused on the following funding themes. 
maintain current service levels. I was directed to continue to fund accounts at levels that will enable the service level to remain to a high standard. Maintain current capital funding levels. The cost of maintaining the town's infrastructure through the capital budget <coughs> is a necessary expense that has to be recognized. This year's appropriation exceeds our capital improvement policy guidelines and will allow us to make significant headway towards meeting the town's capital improvement needs. Implement the recreation operational funding policy. The town of Farmington is committed to providing and funding exceptional townwide recreation programs. The recently adopted policy specifies that the general fund will now support the cost for personnel, grounds, and facility maintenance of the golf course. The recommended town expenditure increase is 4.09 percent. This includes the transfer of the golf course maintenance accounts of $376,021 or 1.4 percent into the general fund. This transfer is offset by the revenues collected by the golf course operation. I have included $332,990 in the revenue portion of the budget. The revenue of the golf course offsets the majority of these expenditures. Without the transfer of the golf course maintenance accounts, the overall increase of my recommended budget is 2.71%, which is below the town council target. This recommended budget of 2.71% not only maintains the service levels that residents expect and enables the expansion of several services. I will now review the expenditure portion of the town budget in detail. General administration. The general administration group of accounts includes expenses for the administrative branch of the town government and funding for nonprofit organizations that the town supports. Some areas to note, the town manager account shows a part-time land consultant position that will manage the land's, town's land acquisition program. The salary reserve account and the personnel budget covers two years of salary adjustments. The registrar budget has, has been increased to support the presidential election in 2016. The planning department shows an increase to fund a map scanning project. The town clerk's office equipment has been increased to reflect storage needs. The proposed budget requested for this group of counts is $6,413,748 or 6% increase above the current budget. Public safety. The public safety group of accounts includes fire, police, emergency medical and ambulance services, dispatching and building inspection functions. Some areas to note, the fire hydrant fees are projected to increase 5.9% for the upcoming year. The community policing account in the police department has been increased to add a new patrol officer position to support traffic efforts in town. The animal control account shows a reduction due to the use of the Town of Burlington Municipal Animal Shelter over a private kennel to board dogs. The police fleet account includes funding for three new 24-hour patrol vehicles and lease payments for four unmarked cars and a replacement of the animal control officer vehicle. This is in line with our police vehicle replacement plan. The gas and diesel accounts have been decreased to reflect reduced, pri reduced pricing. The proposed budget request for this group of accounts is $9,566,320 or a 1.3 percent increase above the current budget. The public works group of accounts includes public works, development, highway, grounds and engineering. Some areas to note, the highway and grounds operation account shows funding for four summer seasonal employees who will be used to supplement regular staff. The gas and diesel fuel accounts have been decreased to reflect lower fuel cost. The Westwoods Golf Course Maintenance account has been added to the highway and grounds budget. This includes two full-time positions and two seasonal positions. The engineering account includes funds for a new seasonal construction inspector to assist the department with several large state and town construction projects. The total request for the Public Works Group of Account is $4,650,178, an increase of 9.4 percent. It should be noted that this increase without the addition of the Westwoods Golf Course Maintenance Account is 0.53 percent. Community and Recreational Services. The Community and Recreational Services Group of Accounts includes community services and housing. Some areas to note, the busing account has been increased to reflect uh, actual spending. The Recreation Department and Westwoods Golf Course has been restructured. This will also include <coughs> consolidation efforts with the Board of Education on recreation programs. The total request for Community and Recreation Service account is $815,630, a decrease of 4.5 percent. 
The other group of accounts includes funds for employee benefits and contingencies. The proposed budget request for this group of accounts is $6,783,495, an increase of 4.1 percent. Some areas to note, the health insurance account contains a 3.8 percent increase. This is a result of a slight increase in the town's insurance renewal for next year. The health and the health and hypertension account has been decreased due to stabiliz stabilization of claims cost. The proposed town general uh, fund appropriation is $28,229,371, which, which is a 4.09 percent increase above the current budget. As stated, this includes the transfer of the golf course maintenance account into the highway and grounds account, which is offset by revenues collected from the golf course operation and is shown in the revenue portion of the budget. Debt services. The debt group of accounts includes appropriations to make principal and interest payments on the town's long-term bonded debt. The total recommended amount for next year's <coughs> fiscal year is $6,827,369. This is an increase of $8,749 or 0.13 percent from the previous year. Debt service payments are flat as a result of maturing of debt and the refinancing of some existing debt that was undertaken last year. Special services. The refuse collection budget includes the cost of collecting and disposing of solid and bulky waste generated by town residents and the, and the town's landfill operation. The budget proposes no rate increase. The annual fee will remain at $235 per household. The proposed general fund appropriation to support the capital improvements is $3,236,900. The proposed capital budget recommends funding above the policy limit in order to take advantage of projected flat debt service payments in fiscal year 1617. Over the past few years, debt service payments have been reduced or have been flat. This reduction will be temporary as we will soon be increasing the town's outstanding debt to finance the upgrade of the wastewater treatment facility. Since the reduction is expected to be short term, I am recommending that we use these funds to increase the capital budget to fund improvement projects on a non-recurring nature. In the following years, when the town debt service increases, we will then be able to move these funds back to the debt service budget to help mitigate the impact of the tax rate. <coughs> The town's capital improvement plan, the CIP, and the town's strategic plan were the policy guidelines that were at the forefront when formulating the CIP while focusing the appropriations into three main funding themes. These themes are equipment, infrastructure maintenance improvements, technology and communication initiatives, and building improvements and renovations. I have included a list of my recommended capital budget. The proposed budget has two bonding items. The first item is very similar to the bond that was passed several years ago for road reconstruction and paving. A bond appropriation of $4 million is proposed and would include road reconstruction and paving along with miscellaneous drainage projects. This funding will allow the town to pave and reconstruct approximately 10 miles of town roads. The second bonding question is the replacement of Engine 3 at Southwest Fire Station for $600,000. Here is an overview of the proposed road, constru road reconstruction that will be completed over the next three years. This slide shows the northwest section of town, which includes a portion of Lake Garda, roads off 167 and ro uh, roads off of 167 and Route 177, and an area off of West District Road. This slide shows the south central section of town, which includes Pinnacle Road and a portion of Farmington Village roads. This slide shows the northeast section of town, which includes Oakland Gardens. The Water Pollution Control Authority will hold a public hearing on its budget on March 9, 2016 <coughs> at 7 p.m. in the Board of Education Conference Room. The budget shows a 2.6 percent increase in the sewer usage rate. The Board of Education account includes the request of $63,033,101, an increase of 4.37 percent above the current budget. I will now call on the Board of Education to present their budget, and then I will be back to present the grand list revenues and the tax rate.
Good evening, members of town council or board of education, parents, students, and Farmington residents. I'm pleased to pre present uh, the Board of Education's recommended 2016-17 school year budget to the town council and to our community. The 2016-17 school district budget was developed to address the Board of Education's mission, five-year goals, vision of the graduate, and priorities within the budget guidelines, policies of the board, and state and federal requirements. Our vision of the graduate was collaboratively developed back in 2009-10. Since that time, the vision of the graduate has driven our improvement efforts in Farmington in visionary ways, placing Farmington at the forefront of innovation in teaching, learning, student outcomes, and students as leaders of their own learning. This is a slide of the four main components of our vision of the graduate, and on this slide, you can see examples of students actively engaged in learning in a highly authentic and meaningful ways. Our vision of the graduate includes a core body of knowledge, content, and thinking and learning skills required for success in college and careers. The board's recommended budget I present to you was developed to address Farmington's compelling mission. Our mission was designed to directly align to our goals and vision of the graduate, creating a strong through line from our mission and goals to all classrooms across all schools. Enrollment is a major factor when it comes to the budget development process each year. This slide is a 10-year overview of enrollment, professional regular education staff, FTE, or full-time equivalents, special education FTE, and special education identification rates, and all of which have a relationship in this budget. We have a unique enrollment story, different from other Farmington Valley school districts. When other Farmington Valley school districts are declining by over 100 students per year or closing schools due to significant declines in enrollment, which allow for smaller school district increases, Farmington is not experiencing a significant decline in enrollment. Another unique aspect of our enrollment story is that our projections have been lower than our actual enrollment. So we've been building budgets on lower enrollment projections than we actually have experienced, putting a stress on our budget each year. In 2014-15, we had 66 more students than projected. In 2015-16, we had 102 more students than projected. And with the new projection report that we received just this month from Peter Prouda, uh, we have a potential for 121 more students than we have projected in this budget. We can provide more information about this during our workshop tomorrow. 10 years ago, we had an enrollment of 4,166 students, a professional regular education staff FTE of 311.80, a special education FTE of 38.3, and a, a special education rate of 9.4% of, of the total population. In 2009-10, we experienced significant FTE reductions that changed the education in Farmington because FTE reductions mean reductions in programs and services. Over the course of the last six years, we have slowly and thoughtfully been building back vital programs and services, and at the same time, we have experienced a change in our demographics with higher numbers of students in need of special services and more intense student needs than we have experienced in the past. In 2015-16, you will see a more significant increase in regular education FTE, and that was driven by full day kindergarten. 10 years ago, we had 311.8 regular education FTE, and in 2016-17, we have proposed 315.55 regular education FTE a slight increase of 3.75 FTE over the 2007-8 school year, but we now have full day kindergarten, a significant change from our programming 10 years ago. If you look at special education staffing and the percentage of students requiring special education programming, our FTE increase has been significant over the last 10 years. It continues to be, and it is a major driver in this budget. For example, 10 years ago, we had a 9.4% identification rate in special education with 
Special Services FTE. This year, we have an identification rate of 12.5% and 58.15 Special Services FTE are proposed in the 2016-17 year budget. When we talk about unanticipated enrollment, we have experienced a significant increase in the number of students moving into the district after the budget is set with special needs. This unanticipated uh, costs for these special services required were not budgeted for during the budget development approval process and puts significant strain on our budget. Uh, th thus, required special services costs continue to be a major driver in this budget. The Board of Education's budget reflects a total budget amount of $63,033,101 with an increase of $2,641,892 or a 4.37% increase over the 2015-16 school district budget. The major budget drivers to arrive at this 4.37% increase are as follows. Salaries. 1.82 increase. This is uh, due to contractual obligations. Benefits is a 1.01% increase. Again, contractual obligations. And special services, things that are new in this upcoming budget, account for 1.31% of the increase. These are special education services driven by need. In services, it's a 0.25% increase. I'll give you some examples. This is due to our contractual bus contract and legal services for an upcoming negotiations with our teachers union, as well as much needed repairs to buildings. Other is a negative 0.02%. Here are examples of our favorable state rankings when it comes to expenditures. I'm only going to highlight a few of these rankings. There is a relationship between this slide and the up, an upcoming slide on the many and varied accomplishments. It's excellence in education and fiscal responsibility and management. The rankings are based on Connecticut's, Connecticut's 169 towns with one spending the most and 169 spending the least. In school-based administration, 152. Farmington administrators on average supervise, develop, and evaluate more teachers than similar districts. This is truly impressive when we look at the state's teacher evaluation guidelines and requirements, increased legislative demands, and our own internal expectations of our administrators. Special Education 156. Although we have added positions and programming in special education due to student needs, and this is a major driver in this budget, we have done so in a fiscally responsible way. Plant Services 146. This speaks to our outstanding custodial and maintenance staff. 143. Am I using different? Last year. <laughs> Just, oh, what's that? I think the numbers you have might be last year's. Okay, well, I'm giving you this year's. <laughs> hmm. Okay, regular education transportation is 142, and total transportation 135. Is that correct, Vince? Uh, the ones on the uh, slide are correct. Those are the correct ones. Yeah. I am giving you different. OK, so let's look at this again. <laughs> so school-based administration, 154. Special education is 153 instead of 156. Plant services, 143. Regular education transportation is 129. Total transportation, 149, and employee benefits, 149. Thank you. <laughs> we have much to be proud of as a community. Farmington continues to be highlighted as the regional, in regional state and national levels for excellence in teaching and learning and student outcomes. This slide highlights some of the accomplishments. I will highlight a few of the notable items. Last year, we were highlighted on a national list of the 25 schools worth visiting. We were the only school in Connecticut listed as worth visiting in Education Week. We are a P21 National District Exemplar for excellence in preparing students for success in college, work, and life in an ever-changing world community. National and state level rankings, we consistently rank in the top 10 schools, uh, high schools in Connecticut, US News and World Reports, the Washington Post, and the Daily Beast. 
Um, our Farmington Public School Foundation has committed to fund a second innovative initiative grant at FHS and IAR for innovative multimedia production labs. Our students are presenting at regional and national conferences, some of those students are here, sharing best practices with teachers and administrators with a focus on student-centered teaching and learning. These are just a few notable highlights. Through the community's investment in our schools, we continue to lead the way in education. The 2016-17 budget presented today maintains and advances the implementation of the Board of Education's visionary five-year goals, our vision of the graduate, and mission through innovative programming, K-12, expanded elementary world language programming, <coughs> additional supports and special services for students' social-emotional well-being, which is a major budget driver in this budget, continued state-of-the-art curriculum development, a, a, a focus on staff and faculty development, a focus on maintaining technology integrated instruction and class size levels in accordance with Board of Education policy. These areas represent the overall themes of this year's budget. You will see these themes emerge throughout the budget presentation and approval process. Given our favorable rankings, here are some specific examples of how we focused on cost containment and avoidance while providing a quality education for Farmington students. We have consistently collaborated with the town, applied for grants, and engaged in regional purchasing opportunities as a school district. Here are additional highlights of our fiscally responsible approach to budget development. We are engaged in a cost containment initiative focused on stop loss insurance, which is another driver in this budget. We repurpose staff to avoid additional staff requests. We plan for the future um, when it comes to efficiencies, and we also reduce this budget by over $650,000 to arrive at the 4.37% increase. This next slide is one data point uh, of our increased need in special services, which is one of the themes I shared with you. This is just one example, but we will see an overall trend of increased need in special services support and programming. Although we are experiencing increased student need in special services, and this has caused the district to increase services and specialized programming, we continue to take a fiscally responsible approach to excellence in program development and services as seen on this slide comparison of special services costs across the district and other districts in the area. As with the town side of the budget, the Connecticut State Department of Ed currently has a propo proposed reductions which may impact special education excess cost grant. This is a grant that reimburses the school district when costs exceed four and a half times our per pupil expenditure in special education. We do not receive 100% reimbursement as promised when, these grant, when the grant was initially put in place. Instead, that percentage of reimbursement has been reduced especially in ec difficult economic times. If this percent is reduced even more at the state level, we could lose hundreds of thousands of dollars in excess cost grant funding, putting our budget at risk. There could be other cuts to funding that come from the state level, and this is something we need to watch closely during this budget process and beyond. This slide provides an overview of the reductions that have occurred in order to arrive at this recommended budget for 2016-17. The first driver of the budget is salaries. As you can see, this accounts for 67.5% of the budget and reflects negotiated increases with all of our associations shown on this slide. The 100 series reflects a 3.87% increase over this year's budget. This chart provides an overview of the professional certified staffing requests for the 16-17 school year. The primary driver of the staffing increases this year is the increased need in special services to support the social-emotional social well-being of students and academic excellence for all students. It is important to note that this slide shows a focused approach on achieving efficiencies through careful ongoing analysis, protocols uh, that result in cost containment and avoidance while maintaining excellence in programming and services for our students. 
The second major dr budget driver is employee benefits. This account provides for 100% of expected paid claims and the administration of our employee health insurance. We are proud to continue to experience employee costs of health care services below industry average. You can see the life and long-term disability costs on this slide as well. Stop loss is a major driver of this year's uh, increase in insurance. The 200 series accounts for 14.48% of our total budget. There is a 7.17% increase in this account. This slide provides an overview of our best practices approach to self-insurance management. Through our joint policy efforts with the town, as well as a transition to a high deductible HSA that promotes consumerism, preventive care, and high quality insurance, we are seeing favorable trends and claims. Again, the increase in employee benefits is driven by stop loss insurance due to a limited number of catastrophic claims. The 300 series includes varied items, public utilities, contract with Connecticut Natural Gas, professional development, energy savings through our, uh, our joint board town performance contract, and special education outplacements. The 300 series accounts for 14.19% of our total budget. It reflects a 5.40% increase. Special education, again, is a major driver in the 300 series. Here are some of examples of our commitment to cost containment and excellence in various areas covered by the 300 series, from energy savings due to joint efforts with the town, in-house cost-effective professional development, high quality in district special education programming, and an internal assessment system that has reduced externally scored assessments. The 400 uh, supply series reflects 0.76% increase and accounts for 2.73% of the total budget. Some increases in the 400 series can be attributed to supplies needed for new and exciting integrated science units at the elementary level. This account provides for facility um, use in swimming and ice hockey competitions and for the purchase of a wide range of items such as instructional health, custodial computer, and testing supplies. This slide reflects the budget level for the 500 series, which is less than 1% of the total budget, or a 0.70%. The 500 series reflects equipment requests. There is a negative 3.73% decrease for equipment, including technology equipment. We have successfully built a technology infrastructure and capacity over the past six years, and we are now moving to replacing and repurposing Chromebooks. The 500 series includes technology requests. The technology requests in the 2016-17 recommended bu budget center upon two broad themes, technology for teaching and learning and technology for productivity and efficiency. As you can see from this slide, technology has assisted in a more student-centered, personalized approach to teaching and learning in Farmington. All aspects of our work with students and our students' independent and collaborative work have been enhanced by technology. In addition, technology has helped to make our systems more efficient and our work more efficient. We have taken a strategic cost-effective approach to purchasing technology to maximize the school district's budget and, to impact, and the impact of technology on all aspects of our work. We are increasing technology access to build a sustainable environment for 21st century, century learning. This slide shows the progression over the past five years, including the upcoming school year. It reflects a state-of-the-art technology plan that we are very proud of in Farmington, based on our vision of the graduate and our framework for teaching and learning. Personalization and student-centered learning is a focus in Farmington. Web-based resources and digital media engage students and provide opportunities to access curriculum, interventions, and online learning tools from anywhere. Technology is, a, is vital to our students, as it is in today's and tomorrow's workplace. It is an integral part of teaching and learning each day in Farmington, promoting all ele elements of our vision of the graduate. Here are several examples of how the school district has focused on strategic cost allocation uh, and technology integrated instruction across all schools and grade levels. 
dues and fees are our last series, the 600 series. It reflects a negative 2.53% decrease. This includes memberships to organizations and liability and property insurance. This slide is an overview of the Board of Education's 2016-17 recommended budget, which I reviewed with you within this presentation. This provides the overall budget total and percentage increase. It is imperative that we continue to provide in Farmington a world-class education that enables all students to achieve academic and personal excellence, exhibit persistent effort, and live as resourceful, inquiring, and contributing global citizens. Farmington continues to lead the way in excellence in teaching and learning, as well as student outcomes and achievements. Our financial plan supports and advances these efforts. Our students, faculty, school and district accomplishments, continuous improvement efforts, rigorous curriculum, and high quality programming have contributed to a nationally recognized education here in Farmington. Given our expenditure rankings, we consistently show lower spending as compared to other schools across Connecticut. Taken together, we are responsive both fiscally and in our commitment to excellence in education to our community and our students. Each one of our students will someday help shape our local, national, and world community. Their education here in Farmington will prepare in them and develop in them the knowledge and skills outlined in our vision of the graduate, thus preparing them for a successful future. Thank you. Here's a, a summary of the expenditures. The total recommended budget for fiscal year 16-17 is $101,326,741, an increase of $3,764,004, or 3.86% above the current budget. The grand list. The grand list is broken down into three categories, real estate, personal property, and motor vehicles. The real estate account shows a 0.86% increase, the personal property account shows a 6.78% increase, and the motor vehicles account shows a 0.96% increase. In summary, the grand list increased by 1.2% or $42,371,023 for a total grand list of $3 574821028 Some areas to note, the personal property increased by 6.78%. This is a significant increase and demonstrates the strong business environment in Farmington. This chart illustrates our grand list growth from 2007-8 to 16-17 without the revaluation years. Our grand list uh, experienced its largest increase in almost a decade. Revenues. Revenues have been broken down into categories that include other property taxes, license and permits, fines and penalties, interest, grants, service charge, other, and the Westwoods Golf Course contribution. In summary, projected non-tax revenues are $10,035,204, or a 0.61% increase over the current year. Some areas to note. State and federal grants have been reduced by 1.887%. Due to the uncertainty of the state budget process, I did not include all of the proposed revenue that was included in the governor's proposed budget. I am recommending that some of the revenue not be included in order to have a buffer for any changes that the state legislature may make to the governor's proposed budget. The Westwoods contribution account. As I've stated throughout the presentation, the Westwoods maintenance account has been added to the revenue portion of the budget to support the addition of the golf course maintenance expenses. Proposed recommended tax and mill rate. The recommended general fund budget will require a property tax rate of 25.84 mills, an increase of 0.74 mills, or a 2.95% tax rate tax increase. Shown is the cost for the average homeowner with a house assessed at $232,074.
The recommended 1617 budget provides a strong financial backbone to move the town's strategic plan forward. The budget continues the town's commitment to providing and funding exceptional services townwide. The budget supports the management of programs and services that are in accordance with industry best practice and adheres to our strong financial policies such as the town's capital improvement plan and the recreational operational funding policy. The budget was built to maintain current service levels, ensure that our capital improvement needs are met, and to expand services where needed and supported by town goals and objectives as outlined in the strategic plan. Farmington remains well positioned in terms of economic development and encouraging growth in the community. The town of Farmington continues to see positive increases in the grand list. Continued growth demonstrates the strong business environment in Farmington. It shows that businesses are continuing to invest in Farmington and that our community is a desirable place to both work and live in. Farmington continues to offer top rated schools and high quality services at a low and enviable tax rate. A strong grand list and a positive economic development will serve to bolster the town against an uncertain state budget environment. We continue to serve the community at a high level without substantially increasing the tax resources. We do this while our population, infrastructure, and calls for service have grown significantly over the last decade. We continually review the organization for efficiencies, cost savings, and implementation of best practices for municipal government. This has afforded us the ability to expand some services next year where indicated by our strategic plan and meet the needs of the community. My staff and I stand ready to assist you in your deliberations throughout this week, and shown here is the 2016 budget schedule. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the town manager and to our superintendent, Kathy Greeter. Now I'd like to open it up for comments, and if you would like to address the council, just give your name and address, and you have uh, five minutes to speak. If you're a student, please don't give us your address, just your name, and you can come to the podium. Is there anyone that would like to speak? My name is Nora Benanti. I'm at 26 Tall Timbers Drive. I just want to give a quick note in support of the superintendent and the Board of Education's budget. Um, while there's many reasons why I support the budget, I'm going to highlight just one. I've observed firsthand the benefit of the Spanish program introduced this year for kindergarten and first grade. Senora Garza and her instruction are bright stars bright spot in my daughter's day. Not only are there obvious benefits to learning a language spoken by so many people, I've seen Lillian's curiosity about other cultures and the world beyond Farmington as a result of this instruction. This curiosity is exactly the type of skill intended in Farmington's vision of the graduate that meets the challenges of global citizenship in a rapidly changing world. We've had conversations about sentence structure and how the modifying adjective often comes after the object in Spanish and before the object in English. And that, that's a demonstration of the critical thinking and reasoning that's also being fostered by this instruction. So I don't want to see this program reduced. And additionally, I don't want to see any other programs reduced, including specifically the technology purchase um, planned for this year. So again, this is just one example, but I wanted to make sure I came here and offered my support for the budget um, proposed by the superintendent and the Board of Education. Thank you. Thank you. Beth Kittner, 24 Farmstead Lane, and I'm also the president of Farmington Future, the budget advocacy group in town. I want to thank everyone for their time and hard work as you start this process. And on the Board of Education side and Superintendent side as well, and Town Manager. I know it's a lot of work, and you still have some work cut out for you as we go through the process. Um, as you consider the budget for the town and schools, I hope that you'll carefully look at the needs of the town and continuing move, moving Farmington forward. Um, the target budget increase um, is always 
a question out there, and we get a lot of questions um, on it in, as far as Farmington Future goes. And I, I think it's a good practice in theory, but I think that it doesn't always take into consideration what's driving the budgets each year. The timing is a bit tricky. Um, again, good practice in theory, but I'm always concerned that it sets up an unrealistic expectation early on in the process um, before the budgets are even presented. So I just want to put that out there. But I hope that you'll consider the budget recommendations from the town manager and the Board of Education this week with an open mind, considering the needs of the constituents, kind of the desires of the constituents, and the goal of moving Farmington forward. Um, I'd like to ask that you don't make any significant cuts at a time and in an environment that simply doesn't call for it. We're not in a recession. Our economy has improved much in the past few years. Our grand list has grown. We heard from the town manager. Um, that's something quite notable. It's the most we've seen in nearly a decade, and it's primarily due to strong business climate in town, so those are really great signs. Um, I know there's a question on the state level. There is always that kind of hanging over our heads, but I just hope that we don't budget too much out of fear of the unknown and, and really look at kind of what the knowns are and what the, the needs of the town are. So for several, several years now, we've had no active group opposing the budget. Um, we have quite the opposite. Farmington Future is growing in strength and numbers. Um, we turn out the yes votes. We've had four years in a row of passing the budget referendum on the first try um, as a result of our advocacy and getting people involved and aware of the process and coming out to, to vote at referendum. Um, so I think that that's something that needs to be considered as well. The yes votes have strongly outnumbered the no votes. Um, and that's, again, because we have a strong base of people that are coming out and aware of the budget. Um, I know that there's been a lot of correspondence coming in, mostly to people, to the town council about the budget, and that's mostly from people who can't be here. Um, a lot of our members are parents of young children, and even with older children running them around, it's, it can be difficult. Time, so I hope that you'll consider that correspondence just as equally as important as public comment tonight. Um, our members are aware of the budget issues and they're looking for a responsive budget and we know that they're going to vote. So we have a budget vote every year in Farmington which is not the same as all municipalities but we have a referendum that allows the voters to approve or reject the budget. And like I've said before, we have a strong base and we have um, no strong opposition and so um, that's, I, I hope that you'll allow the townspeople the chance to vote on the budgets in full. Um, so I don't see any viable reason for any significant reductions to be made to reduce the town budget in the areas of education or the town services. Um, I like what I'm seeing in the capital side. I think it's great that we're keeping our infrastructure and our roads moving forward. Um, so as a resident and a taxpayer and president of Farmington Future, I ask that you approve the budgets without any major cuts that are going to uh, result in loss of programs and that we can continue to move the town forward both on the town side and in the schools. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Tim Kelly from 62 Westview. Uh, I want to thank all the board members and staff here for uh, the time that you put into the budget process. I know how extensive that is. Uh, I would, however, like to emphasize that the projected school budget needs to be kept in line with the realities of the ecosystem we operate in. Um, I do recognize the school budget can be a highly emotional topic, but uh, we live in a GDP growth environment of 1.8 percent. Uh, inflation rate's about the same. Uh, we see that in a lot of the things we procure. Uh, and the Farmington school enrollment is now down from its peak about 10 percent. Uh, and will logically continue to drop because of the obvious demographics. Certainly there will be blips along the way. It's not a smooth curve. I, I would say that we took a significant budget increase last year, uh, particularly in comparison to surrounding towns. So last year Farmington, and this is the school budget, was 3.7 percent increase. Avon was 2.9 percent, Simsbury 2.5 percent, West Hartford 1.8 percent, Glastonbury 1.4 percent. Uh, so those are the kind of benchmarks I think that need to be considered in the process. Uh, for this year, we're proposing, I think it's 4.37, 
Uh, Simsbury is 2.2. Uh, Plainville is 2.2. Canton is 2.0 percent. Glastonbury 1.9 percent, and Granbury, uh, Granby 0.5 percent. Um, so it makes no sense that we should be consistently increasing our spending 50 to 100 percent more than similar districts. Uh, today we already spend more per pupil than Madison, Simsbury, Trumbull, West Hartford, Avon. Newtown, Glastonbury, New Hartford, uh, New Fairfield, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we're now looking at spending over 15,000 per pupil in the school system. Uh, I, I think we need to really take a look at this during the process in the coming weeks and uh, significantly rework the proposed school budget for the coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Emily Pettit at uh, 30 Dunwood Court. Um, I'm a taxpayer and a mother of three kids that attend Farmington schools. And I'm here today to support the Board of Ed budget and ask that you do not make cuts prior to referendum. Most of the increases asked for in this budget are for previously negotiated contracts, federally mandated special education services, and maintaining existing programs. If you choose to cut this budget, you'll be asking the, for cuts that significantly impact our students. There is much needed technology that needs to be purchased. The world language program that was implemented last year should continue to be expanded each year as promised. There are class sizes at West District, which is my school and I assume other schools as well, that are already too big and our kids are getting lost in, in such large classes. If you do not approve the increase that has been presented to you, all of these areas could be negatively impacted. I understand that the town council does not cut specific programs, but if you cut this budget, you'll be asking the Board of Ed to do just that. On a side note, as taxpayers, we expect public officials involved with the budget to think carefully and fairly when making their decisions in this process. Given the needs of the school district in town this year and the economic environment, I hope that we can agree that, and I saw this on social media, the budget slasher 2000 does not need to be implemented. Let's not joke about our children's future. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. <clears throat> My name is Justin Eisner, and I'm on the uh, student council um, at Farmington High School. And uh, I just want to say a couple of quick things. Um, what makes Farmington so special is um, our uh, thriving for excellence in all the um, aspects of our education and um, through all our programs. Uh, uh, as a senior, I've been in the education system for um, my whole educational career. So um, I've seen a lot of different programs come and go, and, uh, but there's always that one common theme of um, pushing for excellence and uh, I think um, now more than ever um, we're trying to incorporate um, different kinds of learning and um, really trying to um, suit all uh, our students needs and um, I feel that um, the only thing that could be limiting um, our students potential is um, material things such as um, technology um, or outdated buildings um, I know that's a focus right now at Farmington High School is um, you know, uh, uh, having more space for learning and um, kind of renovating our building. Um, and also um, just getting uh, newer uh, technologies and trying to utilize our technologies as best we can to um, uh, push our learning uh, one step further. So I think it's important that we um, support this budget as uh, the only thing limiting us is material things because uh, all our students have so much potential and I think we just need to support that with every means possible. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Kelly Sardinas. I'm at 6 Apple Tree Lane in Farmington. I've been a resident for about nine years. I have three children, one in third grade, one in first grade, and an incoming kindergartner. And I'm here to voice my support for the Board of Ed and their budget. Um, one of the biggest things I've noticed um, in this year was the implementation of the World Language Program, which my first grader has not only loved as much as she loves her specials, which as you probably know is a hard thing to top. She comes home every day. My third grader is angry that she doesn't <coughs> get the language program. Um, and she's teaching my incoming kindergarten in Spanish. <laughs> so it's something that they love and they enjoy it and it's not stressful for them. It's something that they're learning at a rate that's appropriate for their age level. And I think it just better prepares them for that fifth grade when they come in and they're expected to learn it at a different level. Um, the class sizes, again, any significant cut to the budget does impact the class sizes. I have a child who has 24 kids in her class. And even though that might not be the average that we strive for, that's the high, that could be the high end. And so if you increase or change the teachers, the number of teachers we have, that high end is going to go up. Even though the average might not change to near 24, they have a range, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to be impacted. Um, technology as well. I mean, I think what the kids can do with the technology is amazing, and I think that, that we need to continue to support that. The last thing I will leave you with is where I work, we get asked all the time if we want to move to Florida because that's where we're building a building. And the biggest thing for me every time I'm asked do I want to go are the schools. And it's because we have such great schools here and they don't have the reputation that we have. So I would hate to see cuts come and that decision not be as easy because our schools aren't as good as they always have been. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Andrew Deacon. I'm a senior at the high school here in Farmington. I, I don't think anybody in this town can fully appreciate the programs that are put in place in the schools like, like the students can. And as a senior, and as I begin reflecting on my time in Farmington, uh, I begin to think about how appreciative I am for, for everything that, that the, the town has done for me while I've been in the schools. Uh, and again, as I reflect, I, I realize how much change there really has been over the years. Uh, I've been able to, to be a part of the music programs, the athletic pro programs, um, uh, all, all types of academic programs, and uh, the changes over the years have really been remarkable, and I'm realizing that uh, I'm, I'm fully prepared for whatever my, my future may hold as a result of the constant improvements being made in our schools. And I, I think the, the budget that's being presented is a perfect way to continue those improvements and uh, really sets up the school for another great year of uh, improving uh, the lives of, of students in Farmington. So I'd like you to take that into consideration that the students really do appreciate uh, what's being done in this town. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen K, 57 Garden Gate. Uh, a little while back, I sent an email both to the Board of Ed and to the Town Council. I want to thank the members of both for your responses, and specifically Nancy, I want to thank you for the phone call that we had, um, the, the lengthy consideration that, that was a long call, so I, I appreciate that, and I want to express that from the beginning. One of the things that we talked about was, a, um, was last year, and a promise, the way that I interpreted that was made by the Town Council to support the continuation of foreign language and it was at that time that I was, I was reminded of the hard work that you all do. For I went back to look at the, the video and there was four hours and 20 minutes on Nutmeg TV where Nancy asked, now um, to go on a foreign language or world language, to look at the teachers and I was thinking about what Meredith was saying, whenever we started a program, whether it was in seventh grade or sixth grade, we know we wanted to move it forward. So would, be, would it be your expectation that Spanish would be the language that we continue. And when, do we, and when do they have a choice? Is it middle school? And they go on for a little bit. And Kim Wynn responded, it's in fifth grade. Nancy asked, so would you expect it would be a teacher a year that we would need to add? Or are you not really sure? Does it depend on the number of kids? And Kim responded, that it would be a reasonable way to think about it. And Kim continued to talk about a little bit more. And she said that we would be increasing, um, we have some some flexibility with FTEs, but we'd expect the FTEs to increase as the World Language Department continued to grow each year. 
And this is just one of the many examples of why Farmington is such a special place. So you are so incredibly thoughtful about your decisions that you make. We don't rush into things, which often leads us a step behind other school districts. So as TARP, for example, is adding Mandarin next year, we're hoping to preserve foreign language. But the difference is we put so much thought into every single thing that we do, whether, whether it's adding technology, whether it's adding foreign language. And our superintendent is so thorough when she makes her decisions that it's not like we're just throwing money into the wind. So I can't express enough how much I hope that you support both the, um, the education side and the town side of the budget. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Kristen Mock from 26 Farmstead Lane. I come to you tonight as a real estate agent uh, PTO president of Noah Wallace and as a concerned parent. Um, I first want to say that Farmington does a tremendous job. We operate on a lean budget and we get serious results out of that budget and it never ceases to amaze me. I moved here 10 years ago precisely because of the high quality education and the low taxes. I have real estate clients all over the place who are coming to Farmington specifically for that reason. They look at our tax rate, they look at the taxes they pay on comparable houses in West Hartford versus Farmington. They're blown away with how we can accomplish so much with so little. But it's a delicate balance. And if you get to the point where you're cutting so much that we degrade the quality of our education, then suddenly the town doesn't seem so appealing anymore. We lose that little bit of a competitive edge. I would say our enrollment numbers are going up because Farmington is becoming a more and more desirable place to be because of our education, because of our services, and yes, because of our tax rate. It is significantly lower than the surrounding towns, and I think that's important. But again, it's a delicate, delicate balance. We are not, this budget is not asking for significant increases in the mill rate. It's something that wouldn't even be noticed by incoming people and that's important. Um, as a PTO president, I can tell you that our job is becoming very difficult because we are the group that fills in the gaps where the education budget leaves off. A very good example of this is the Chromebooks in the elementary schools. All the kids have them. It's amazing. It's wonderful. Teachers don't. And this, that's a disconnect. The teachers aren't on the same platform as the children. So while the children are running around their classroom and doing all these fabulous things with their laptops, the teachers are chained to their desks. And it was a problem, and it was an opportunity that was missing because teachers couldn't be sitting there collaborating with their students. So as a PTO and as a group of parents, we got together and we said, there is no reason that teachers shouldn't have a Chromebook. We knew that there was no way it would ever get into the budget. It was never going to pass. And so our PTO bought a Chromebook for every single teacher at Noah Wallace, specials teachers, every teacher. And they love them. And the kids love them. And the kids come home and they talk about how great it is that their teacher is sitting right with them with their own Chromebook and they're exchanging things back and forth. It's important. It's not the role of the PTO to do that. We have a very hard time raising money because we have a lot of pushback from parents saying, well, that's what my taxes pay for. But it's not. Things like that get left out. We're happy to fill in that gap, and we will continue our fundraising efforts to do so. But if the gap keeps growing larger and larger, I have a fear that the schools that have a high fundraising capability versus the schools that have a low fundraising capability, there's going to be a disconnect. And all of a sudden, our four elementary schools are going to turn into one or two great have schools and a couple of have nots because they can't support the same level of cultural and technology um, that the other PTOs can. And that's not something that should be left up to the parents, in my opinion. And third, as a parent, I have three children, all at Noah Wallace right now. Uh, between the three of them, they have not had nine classes through all of their grades. I have never had once a bad experience with the teacher. I've never once had bad experience with the administration. I've only had bad experiences with the buses being on time. That's my only complaint in my entire, <laughs> in my entire history with Noah Wallace. Um, I've had a kindergartner come in through the half-day program, and now I have a kindergartner in the full-day program. 
and the difference is spectacular. My full day student comes home and he is raving about science. The kid that did only half day kindergarten never had science. He never got to explore that. My child comes home and tells me all of the words he's learned in Spanish. The funniest is banana. He'll have you on the floor laughing, saying what, how to say banana in Spanish. But it's, it's, an, it's amazing to see what fun and what experience they're having. And half the battle with children in education is just getting them to want to learn. And to me, that's the purpose of the kindergarten year. Teach the kid how to go to school, how to love school, how to embrace learning, and to be ready for first grade. And the full day kindergarten has really achieved that, in my opinion. And the idea of adding the science programs and adding the world languages only enhances that even more. It is a significant, significant difference. I had one child who was dreading first grade because he was worried about going to having that whole boring, stressful day going to full time instead of half day. And I have another one who cannot wait to learn even more. Um, the Spanish program is incredible, um, and I, I really, really hope that that will continue. Um, talk about a way to uh, have global citizens. It's been well documented that children learn languages best at very young ages, and once they learn that first languages, that first language, it's much easier to learn an additional language at an older age. So we are literally opening up their minds and embedding in them. The, the ability to learn more and more as their future continues. Um, I just want to end by saying, going back to that delicate balance between taxes and quality of education and making sure that we're a desirable place <coughs> to be, I fear that if we start cutting too much, we're going to tip that balance <coughs> and we're going to start closing the doors for our children and we're going to start losing our population and then that's where our property values start to decrease. So I really want you to take strongly into consideration <coughs> everything that the Board of Education has brought to you, and I hope that you will pass this budget. Thank you. Other public comment about the budget? Okay, then we'll close the public hearing at 8.06. And before you all leave, I just want to thank you very much for coming and taking the time out of your busy lives to be here tonight to speak to us. And uh, don't forget, we have a few more days of budget. So anyone out there would like to come and speak to us, please feel free. Uh, next, we have any new items? There are none. Uh, now we'll have public comment on any topic, um, could be budget or anything else in the town that you'd like to speak about. So please come to the podium. Did, did you did you say the yes public, public comment open to any yes matter? any subject good evening my name is Edgar King of 11 Ledgewood Drive Farmington I uh, have given each of you left uh, with the manager's office I, I assume you have a copy of a letter it's that, in a packet that, we that have, I yes. sent yes relative to the matter of the Board of Education having submitted a request to the Town Plan and Zoning Commission at its uh, November uh, 4 meeting in which they put as a condition recommended to the Town Plan and Zoning Commission, asked them as a condition of approval of its application that the developer be required to build a new playscape at Union School. Uh, in my interest was piqued when I read about it in the newspaper sometime just before Thanksgiving. So I made inquiry of several uh, uh, Board of Education members and others and was, I had never heard of, uh, of that before uh, I knew what was going on with respect to the Charles House property uh, uh, adjacent to Union School, but I'd never heard about this controversy about the playscape. But having made some inquiries, I, I learned that uh, it seemed like everyone else knew about it except except me, 
and uh, some uh, were uh, expressed uh, uh, considerable concern uh, as to whether uh, everything was right in, in, in that request. And uh, I won't go into the details because you have it in my letter. But just in essence, uh, my, my, my problem is that the there's nothing in the minutes or in, in the hearings or of any conversation with, with people with whom I spoke that indicated any nexus or any, any causal connection with the request for the new placecape and the development. Rather, the need, only need that I uh, was able to obtain, the only reason for the request was that the placecape existing is worn out and of no use and out of code. So that raises the question to me, well, why would anyone demand from the developer something which the town has, I learned, has estimated to, to, to cost the replacement $125,000? Why would the town demand that of anyone if it had no condition, no connection to the application <coughs> or the proposed development. Uh, no explanation was given uh, for, that, uh, uh, for that connection other than we just need a new placecape. So the, apparently the, 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 everyone concedes that the, the, the condition of the um, subject issue arose at a public hearing early on when a, a resident asked well of the developer is there any possibility you could build us a new placecape to which he said he didn't know anything about but perhaps something that's something we could consider in the, discuss in the future um, now a very important member of the Board of Education explained to me that the reason simply was that parents had relied on that statement. And having relied upon it, they sh that he shouldn't be able to back down. And if he does, he should know that he'd have a difficult time obtaining further business in this town. Well, I hate to use the term, but I call that a shakedown, a form of, of uh, extortion. Now, I, I don't demean anyone. I, I, and the Board of Education, every one of them, and our whole school administration, I truly have great respect and admiration for them. They're honorable and honest people. And, uh, but I only am going with, with the facts uh, that, that as I have uh, uh, believed them to be from what I'm able to obtain. To obtain. Now, still, the fact that the developer, uh, rather that the TPNZ refused to grant the required condition uh, that may mitigate the, 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 the problem, but it doesn't doesn't erase erase the deed. Uh, and this type of thing has gone on in my experience in the town, particularly in pa years of some past, and I'm sure it does continue to the present. Uh, this does go on. And uh, a You're lot of people know. Ed, if you could, I beg your pardon. You're at six minutes. If you could just bring it together. Are, are you You're at six minutes already. Oh, I'll okay. Have, I'll, so I'll wind it up. it up now. What I I, uh, I I wanted to say to you is simply that the only reason I bring this to your attention is that it it very clearly you can read it for yourself violates our code of ethics about gifts and favors, and uh, another one about uh, fair and equal treatment. Uh, it violates the general and uh, uh, <coughs> statutory laws of which uh, 
all, all everyone, uh, I'm sure, is, is are aware. So it occurred to me that some public notice notify. I don't mean to make a big issue out of it, but perhaps it would be well if the town periodically uh, put out in writing some kind of admonishment to uh, town officials, to all town officials and department heads, to reminding them of, of our laws and expecting them to uh, carry forth on them. Now, the, you have authority, as you all know, under our charter and under the Code of Ethics to enforce these rules. And uh, I, I, I wonder if you wouldn't consider uh, using your, your, that authority as well as the respect that uh, your leadership position holds in the town and among your, your peers and, uh, and town officials and to uh, in some way remind them perhaps yearly or every three or four years of this, uh, these laws mm -hmm. and that they're expected to be uh, uh, respected and, and, and protected. And that uh, perhaps uh, with your authority, I think you have the implied at least duty to do that, to, to okay, remind people that uh, there, there are these things and, and they can't just deliberately uh, ignore them. And you know the off uh, statement that you say that uh, even the appearance of ethics, uh, appearance of wrongdoing uh, should be avoided. And uh, I think you get my point. So okay. I, I would hope that if you, you would consider that and uh, I, in, in the notification, I think that the town chairman of our political parties should notify the town committee membership so that we all know and, and have been reminded that these things exist. I thank you. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Other public comment? Okay, thank you very much. We will move on to reading of the minutes. Madam Chair, I move to approve the February 9th, 2016 minutes of the regular town council meeting. Second. Any corrections or um, additions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Okay. I move to approve the minutes of the February 23rd, 2016 regular town council meeting. Second. Any corrections or changes? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions. Okay. Uh, reading of communications. Kathy. You have uh, two uh, letters, for pieces of correspondence in your packets. One is to our uh, legislative delegation, and one is to the MDC that has to do with the um, Niagara bottling issue. So I did um, write two letters. I've also left at your places. There was uh, a handful of letters um, for the, on the budget and also uh, Mr. King's uh, letter, too. Thank you. <coughs> Just one question. Sure. Did anyone did anyone reply back to you on these correspondence? It's my understanding that the MDC is in the process of responding to us and putting a letter together for us. I spoke to um, by email our non-voting member of the MDC today, and uh, they said that they brought up our letter and they are going to be responding to it. Okay. Have your other towns writing similar letters? I uh, yes. Uh, the whole. A lot of Bloomfield and some other towns are very, very upset by it. Um, so I was just, you know, writing to find out too if it had an impact on the town of Farmington, environmentally or economically. So we'll see what they um, have to say. Other questions or comments? And I just say thank you for writing that because it is important to us and with the health center and everything and, and the use going up. Uh, we look forward to seeing the letter back. <clears throat> and no, nothing new on the two and a half percent, right? No. That's with the cap. So. No. Okay. Uh, next, report of committees. Yukon. Um, we had a Yukon meeting the other day and last week, and they are moving right ahead. 
Um, we had quite a presentation and we actually had a bit of a tour. Um, and for the most part, um, I have information and I have a handout um, if you'd like the information. But basically, they are really moving along. Their construction is project two is moving along. The clinical building C, and these may not seem specific, but if you look at a sheet which has the specific uh, Yukon uh, plan on it, you'd see it. But the academ academic addition and renovations are going full speed ahead. The new patient tower, uh, the Yukon outpatient pavilion, um, and we have uh, completed projects. The, the lab building, lab L building renovations are done, but I also the outpatient pavilion. Um, roadway and traffic improvements, we've certainly seen uh, positive results from those being completed around the area and they've been doing a great job with uh, listening to us as far as our comments and concerns about the traffic around the area. Um, just a couple of things to note, um, over 4,800 4, total jobs uh, have been uh, added since November 2014 and 82% um, of the contracts have been awarded to Connecticut companies. Um, and well that's about it for now we are continuing to meet every couple months with UConn just to keep this um, keep us up on what's going on over there and to see if there are any other needs of the community so we're really pleased with the way things are going and with our relationship land acquisition um, uh, the update on land acquisition would be uh, the TPZ past the A24 for the uh, Southridge property project. Okay. That's all I'm Thank you. Green efforts? Uh, yeah, I want to make everybody aware of a couple things that are coming up uh, in the near future. Uh, first is Farmington Cleanup Day, which is scheduled for April the 30th. Uh, and that's a day where we uh, bring in trash from all over the town uh, and uh, distri uh, to get it taken care of. Now, one thing to note is it's, we call it Cleanup Day. But what we ask for citizens is that entire week to spend some of their time picking up either their own neighborhoods or their favorite trail or the, a place in town where they see that the trash and litter is exceptionally bad. Uh, we do have competitions, so there's uh, competitions for community groups, for uh, businesses, for individuals, for families, for school groups. Uh, so we will have different uh, groups uh, competing against each other. Whoever brings in the most trash will win those, those prizes. Another thing which is new this year, and it's going to be done in conjunction with Cleanup Day, is we're organizing a, a compost bin a discount program. Uh, basically what's happening here is that uh, we've contacted a uh, manufacturer and distributor of compost uh, bins. Uh, we are arranged for them, uh, those bins to be sold to town residents at a uh, discounted price. Basically what we're going to do is to order them ahead of time and we're going to bring, begin that campaign on cleanup day. Uh, we will take uh, orders for approximately one month uh, and then in the middle of June we will have a uh, massive uh, uh, delivery of these compost heaps, compost bins and we will then distribute them on a particular day. So those are things coming up if anybody wants to get interested in, uh, in composting their uh, uh, personal trash. This is a good opportunity and it'll be a, a good piece of equipment to do that with. And again, it's at a discount rate far le less than you're going to pay <coughs> retail. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, Joint Town of Farmington City of Hartford Committee. I have nothing to report on. Bike Advisory Committee. So the Bicycle Advisory Committee is continuing to identify uh, towns uh, which are suitable for bicycling and we're putting signage and, and sharrows on those, on those roads uh, so the people can get a sense of where they can, how they can move around town other than on state roads and other than on the uh, uh, rails to trails. Um, and one further note, while it's not part of the Bicycle Advisory Committee, uh, Bicycle Friendly Farmington is sponsoring a course through Farmington Continuing Education which will teach people about how they can move around our town uh, uh, without uh, being in an unsafe area. So for exa example, if you're from the West District area, a good way to get over to the center of Farmington is to Meadow Road. Uh, and there's a bicycle path over there they can ride it on. And so those are the sort of things that are happening to make people more aware of where they can bicycle safely. Thank you. <clears throat> Farmington Gateway. 
Um, at last week's or last month's meeting, um, we discussed um, a potential new area to be studying, which would be the Five Corners area. Um, so I urge people if um, they can make this meeting on 317 that they, they go to this meeting. We'll, we'll start having a little bit more in-depth uh, conversation probably about um, uh, the Five Corners area. Also, we'll be waiting for the anticipation of the RFPs for the real Route 4 area uh, with the consultants to um, start bidding the economic impact studies and road studies and traffic up it that way. So um, it's moving in a, at a nice pace right now, and the next meeting will be St. Patrick's Day, March 17th. And what time? Five o'clock. Five o'clock. And where? Right, here. right in here. Oh, right here. Uh, can I have a question on that, Peter? Sure. Um, I'm not sure if everybody knows where Five Corners is, oh. given the fact that it only has four corners now. <laughs> Good point. Uh, that would be the Route 6 Finneman Road area. Um, uh, Finneman Road, that, that whole area up there where the Dunkin' Donuts Shell Station is. Right near the United Technology. Yeah. Right near the United Technologies Farm Spring area up there. Okay. I still think there's five corners up there. <laughs> Four corners with a cutoff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Web page subcommittee, John. Um, I don't have anything to report on this. Erica, do you want to? Still in development. Yeah, so I, I mean, we'll have a meeting, I would, probably in April, would, after we get to the budget. Okay. So I'll report something at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, high school renovation committee. The regularly scheduled meeting um, for Wednesday the 9th has actually been canceled because of the budget workshop. Most of the people involved in that committee will be here. So they will continue on Wednesday, March 16th at 4 o'clock at the high school library. And what they're working on right now is um, the language to put out an RFP for schematic plans and preparation of a construction estimate for um, the high school renovation. So they're working on putting that RFP together, and once they get that RFP together, then they'll have the schedule of associated dates, pretty much for the whole process moving forward. So that will be taking place on um, March 16th. Okay, thank you. Uh, report of council chair and liaisons. Uh, the chair report. Uh, two things. First, uh, we had a Farmington Valley Collective meeting last week on Thursday morning, and we met with, uh, I think it's about 12 towns, maybe 10 or 12 towns in the area, which we meet with every month. And the main topic of discussion this week was, um, well, budgets and where people are with their budgets. Uh, and also, uh, we had speakers come in and we talked about the heroin problem in, in uh, well, around everywhere, our state, the towns, surrounding towns, and what people are doing, and just began a conversation about uh, talking to schools and police departments and the community and just getting uh, word out in the community of what's available to help, and um, uh, whether it's parents or just community people. So it's a beginning of a conversation of what's going on and what things should be going on. So it was really informative and, and helpful. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention was that um, the other day uh, we went for a walk. I went for a walk on the trails and I wanted to thank um, the uh, town for the new uh, rails. There are a number of different places where they were down and they're now up and they look wonderful. The rails are great. And there were also some crocuses on the side of the road by some of the benches. So spring is coming and it was great. And the next few days there'll be many more, I think so. But thank you. <laughs> Board of Ed. Um, all I have to report is what we already know. Uh, the Board of Ed passed a 4.37% budget, uh, which they'll present in a workshop to us tomorrow um, from 4 o'clock to 8 o'clock is what they're scheduled for. Other than that, nothing to report. Okay. Unionville, UVIA. I have nothing to report. Okay. TPC. Uh, nothing new to report. Their meeting was canceled Monday night. Oh. Uh, WPCA. Tomorrow, which is Wednesday, March 9th, they are, um, the WPCA is actually holding two public hearings beginning at 7 o'clock in the town hall upstairs in the Board of Ed conference room. And the first is the resolution of funding for the WPCF upgrade.
project, and that's something that I know we'll be talking about with Kathy tonight as well. And the second is um, the proposed sewer budget for 16-17, uh, and that includes the residential sewer assessments. Okay, thank you. EDC. Nothing to report. Human Relations Commission. Nothing to report. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm pleased to report that Cindy Scoville, who was the uh, president of Farmington Chamber, is now president of the Central Connecticut Chamber, uh, or exec an executive director. So, great. Kudos to Cindy. Mm -hmm. Great. <coughs> Any other liaison reports? Report of the town manager, Kathy. You have uh, the report in front of you. Um, just uh, we're pleased that we were awarded a $15,000 grant for the Fisher Farm, and these funds will be used to replace the roof of the vegetable barn at the Sub Edge Farm, and also to paint the barn's exterior, which is currently only has a thin uh, coat. So we uh, were just announced that we did receive uh, that grant. And then I just wanted to give you a quick economic development update that um, uh, New England uh, Products, a local manufacturer located at 36 Spring Lane, has been acquired by uh, uh, an Italian company. And in addition to retaining the company's current workforce, uh, Pedro Rosa will be creating 100 new positions over the next five years. The company will invest in excess of $10 million into the Farmington facility. Um, the State Department of Economic and Community Development will provide a $3 million interest, uh, low interest loan. Um, and so we are uh, pleased that this company is uh, coming to town and that Rose will plan on visiting the company and offer them any assistance during their transition. So we were pleased about that. Great, great news to continue our increase in uh, grand list. <laughs> That's a good one. Should I move to approve? Yes, yes please. All right. I move to approve the report of the town manager. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Uh, appointments. L3, I move that Sally Hatzenbuehler be appointed to the Housing Authority for the balance of a five year term, beginning immediately and ending September 30th, 2016. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. And I have L8. I move that Mark Simpson be appointed to the Conservation and Inland Wetlands Commission for the balance of a four-year term beginning immediately and ending September 30th, 2016. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. Old business, none. Uh, excuse you? me. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Uh, I'd like to uh, move L7. Oh, yeah. To make a uh, motion that uh, Kenneth Miller be appointed to the Retirement Board for a two-year term beginning immediately and ending on January 2018. Second. Any discussion? It's not our oh. Sergeant Kenneth Miller, is it? No. Oh. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay, new business. N1. N1. I move to set a public hearing on Monday, April 11th, 2016 at 7.05 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers on the Town Council's proposed budget for the fiscal year 2016-2017. Second. Any discussion? Just so you know that this is our regular scheduled council meeting. It's just held on Monday instead of Tuesday. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Two. And two. I move to cancel the March 22nd, 2016 Town Council meeting. Second. Any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. And three. I move to approve the acquisition of properties owned by October 24, Inc., located at 8885 <coughs> South Ridge Road, that's lot 7, and 8809 lot 6 A and B Settlement Road, it's approximately 107.1 acres, for the purchase price of $1,225,000, subject to receipt of an acceptable environmental site assessment report, and subject to due diligence, including but not limited to a title search. Second. Kathy. You have the map. We've discussed this at the last public hearing. Um, I just wanted to note that a, gra a grant application for this acquisition has been uh, submitted to the Open Space and Watershed Land Acquisition Grant Program, 
a maximum grant of 65% of the value or $796,250 based on the proposed acquisition price. However, the state has often capped the grants at $500,000 in the past, but we have applied for it and also that the TPZ did um, receive our report and that is complete. So this would be for the acquisition of the property. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how long do you does it usually take? Do you have an idea? Do you get any grants when we hear about grants? You know, they don't have, they're not on a schedule anymore. Right. Oh, they're okay. not on a schedule anymore, so okay. well, we're not sure. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Oh, John? Uh, so at the uh, last time it was, this was presented to us before we went back to TPZ, uh, the Farm to Land Trust had uh, indicated that they were willing to take a conservation easement on these properties and that they were willing to do the stewardship of these properties so that the town of Farmington wouldn't be responsible for the maintenance of these. Um, those things are obviously not in this motion. Uh, is that something that's going to be moving forward? Uh, how does that process work? I received the letter and I'm going to be meeting, uh, getting some more details and then coming back to the council with uh, my recommendation on that. Thank you. Okay, thanks, John. Um, okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Abstentions. Okay. Number four. I move to approve the following Office of Poli Policy and Management Regional Performance Incentive Program Resolution, and that's the resolution found in Agenda Item N4. Second. Yeah. What this is is that um, we've, there's a regional, um, grants that we can apply for and this is the resolution that authorizes us to apply for various grants regionally if you remember one of the grants that we received is uh, shared pieces of equipment we've done various things we're not sure um, again with the state funding if these grants are going to be really out there but we had two things that we were interested in one of them was the stop loss captive insurance and this is a, a, a regional pool for stop loss insurance the staff is still evaluating this initiative to determine if it will be beneficial to the town but I wanted to put it on there so if we if we determine that it is and then it's a, a regional computer lab um, for the police department this has been on the docket for I think a couple of years and we have never gotten grant funding for it regionally but that's something also that we are interested in so it's just uh, authorizing us to participate any questions uh, Nancy sure so uh, the stop loss has been both on a program level and an individual level within the town so that the uh, if we exceeded our uh, self-insurance by more than 25% we then had insurance to cover anything above there. Uh, but we also had stop loss insurance on the individuals. So if the individual's losses exceeded 100,000, I think it is, there was also stop level at that individual level. Is this helping us with both? We're not sure if it's going to help us. Okay. That's, that's part of the uh, process that you're, and again, we're still investigating it, um, but you're part of a pool and we're not sure if it's gonna be in our benefit or not be in our benefit, but it's, I think, well worth looking into it. Okay. Other questions? Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, and five. I move to act on a resolution authorizing an increase of $9,862,837 in the appropriation for the upgrade of the water pollution control facility for an aggregate appropriation of $67,102,837 and authorization to issue revenue bonds, notes, and obligations in the amount of $9,862,837 to finance such increase. Second. So what this is, is that it's come to our attention very recently that the state of Connecticut is wants a resolution from the town council. And this has to do with our clean water fund loan grant appropriations to get our grants for our water pollution control project. They would like the, uh, uh, the resolution showing the total borrowing authorization of the entire project. So that is everything that we've actually paid for they want it in the resolution or things that are paid for by different revenue sources, meaning the Water Pollution Control Authority. The town of Farmington did not finance the project this way. This is just to, in, is a formality. It's a paper trail of authorization. We are not going to be borrowing this money. 
so that I want to be clear about that. It's really just an authorization that the state has that shows that our authorization is for the total amount of the project. We are on, we're going to minus off all our grants, all our clean water funds, everything that comes together. So the net effect is the exact same as what we thought from the beginning. It's just a paperwork that we have to do. And we have to do it because our grants are tied to it and we want the grants and that's how they want us to finance it. And so we have to show an authorization. It's really a formality that is a resolution that authorizes the total cost. It's not the spending, it's just the authorization of it. So the net increase to the taxpayer and to the town is no different than what we've said from the very beginning. The two things that are different, one is that I think our grants are a little bit higher because now we're putting more, we're putting, we're trying to maximize our grants and how you maximize it is having a higher total cost. The other thing is, as you do know, our project did come in over budget and that is being financed through the Water Pollution Control Authority, so that's not coming out of the bond anyway. So again, it's, a, it's, it's really on paper, we have to show the authorization. We would have never financed the project the way that they wanted us to finance it in the first place because they wanted us to authorize things that we've already spent money on. And so you, you would not do that. You wouldn't double dip and ask the taxpayers to pay for something that you already did. But they want this authorization like this. So it's again, it seems odd to me, but we want the grant funding and this is what they told us we need to do. So that's what we're recommending that we do. The Water Pollution Control has to do the same motion and then um, at their meeting tomorrow night, and that's where we're at. Go ahead. Yep. I just, I just want to make it clear that we don't need the extra money. We're not borrowing the extra money, and we're no. not spending the extra money. No. You know, that's just Absolutely for people clear. out there. This is, this is a formality so that we can get the grants that, that we counted on from the beginning. Right. And that's, uh, yeah. I, so, is this something our legal, legal counsel just looked over? It just... Oh, everyone. I mean, that this. Go, I mean, it's, it's signing off on something that really isn't this is, how we're doing things. It just gets me a little concerned. Rolling. No, the the this has been from the state of Connecticut's treasurer office to our bond council to all our legal Everybody's people. Seen, everyone Every, that we trust has seen it. Everyone. And there's nothing that we're missing. No, every. As again, I cannot guarantee when we're dealing with how the state, the clean water fund, and everything like that. But it's. Everyone, our lawyers, the bond council, the state DEP, the treasurer's office, everyone has reviewed this, and this is what we've been told we need to do. But what is just, what is the rationale, the state's rationale, or what are they giving you? Uh, you know, because they're, I mean, they're basically forcing you because you need the 2% right. yes. um, loan. So you're going to, to some extent, do what you're asked, but what is the rationale behind it? I just, I don't like. I know. It's, it's, it's <laughs> difficult. It's we do not do our, our financing the way that they would like us to do our financing because we don't we don't ask for authorization of money that right. we're not. Right. No, I, I understand. But, but why are they tied to? Why does it matter? Because I think my understanding is is that they want to show the full full picture of it, and it doesn't make any sense when you've already paid for it. Right. So I don't I don't really understand that. But that is, and I think some of it has to do with my my opinion is is that we did our project base a little bit different than most um, people finance water pollution control plants. If you remember, the state had told us they wanted us to design the project up front because we were worried that the money was not, the funds weren't gonna be there. Most towns don't do that. Most towns throw that in the bond and then they start, once the bond is open, now you start three years, you design, and then three years later, you have to you mm -hmm. do the project. We financed all that up front, right. and then we didn't include it in the bond. They want us to include that. They wanted us to, and we would never do that. Mm -hmm. But that said, I think that my opinion is is that the state has such stringent rules, and they don't they don't bend. And we did it differently. Mm -hmm. And again, because we did it differently, based on what they told us to do. They need us to do it this way, and that's what they've said. But we're, as a council, not giving authority to do anything else or spend any more money. No. 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 Okay. As long as we're good. <laughs> Seems as though we were very efficient in our way of use of time, and we're doing it much quicker than we would be if we went out and had three years to design mm -hmm. and three years to. I know, absolutely. I just, yeah. as yeah, long as all the eyes have I seen know, it, I'm it's, good. It's, yep. it's, it's very, yes, but this is what it is. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, and just to, I just think it's worth the comment too that um, 
these are the kind of things that take the time, like weeks yeah, of time of Joe and Kathy and trying to put this together and make sense of this so that we can move forward in a, in a reasonable fashion rather than take so long. And it just, those are the kind of things that come in and, you know, when we're expecting to have time for other things. So thank you very much. Okay, any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, number six. I move to award bid number 231, engine four and engine six pumper engines, to Pierce Manufacturing Inc. of Appleton, Wisconsin, at a contract price of $1,096,960. Second. Kathy. This is the um, purpose to the replacement of fire engines four and six, um, fire engines four and six. Um, we went out to bid, I mean, for a referendum of $1,100,000 last year for 2015. This does come under um, the bid. The fire committee and the fire chiefs uh, have reviewed the bid. We are familiar with the, the Pierce uh, company and are happy with the bid. And um, we are recommending that the council approve this. Any questions? Yes. What, how long does it then take to actually get the new engines? I think, isn't it a year? A year. A year. One year. Yeah. To actually build it. Build they it, actually yeah. build it. Other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Abstentions. N7. I move to recommend the transfer of a 2,216 square foot piece of town open space property to Wilson Development in exchange for a 5,252 square foot piece of property to be made permanent open space to the Town Plan and Zoning Commission for a report under Section 8-24 of the Connecticut General Statutes. Second. Kathy. Yeah. Uh, the developer, uh, Wilson Development, had approached the town regarding this land swap, and this is to send it to an 8-24, but then it would come back to the town council. As you can see on the map, I just tried to give you a real basic map. The parcel in question can support a single family home, but the backyard would be less than ideal. The uh, attached map displays the proposed land swap to and from lot 76 in the um, development off of River Road. If approved, the land swap will give the developer a larger building envelope to construct the home and he will be able to provide for a larger backyard. Due to its shape, location, and lot, the sewer easement running through it, the land that the town is receiving is less valuable than the, than the land that the developer is receiving. It's our opinion that the land is worth pursuing from the town standpoint because it will allow for a more appropriately sized home with a higher assessed value. Um, the homes on in that area are uh, $1 million, and this parcel should support a home of the same quality. The town will also receive more open space land than it currently has, and, it, and I'm recommending a cash payment. I don't see really any downsides to it. Um, we've determined that the square foot of the building lot um, in the same area are about seven to nine dollars a square foot. Based on the above, <coughs> I recommend a discounted sale price of three fifty per square foot because the town is receiving land in addition to the payment, and the transfer will allow Wilson Development to build a more valuable home. So it would be about seven thousand seven hundred dollars. And as you can see from the map, is that the top piece on the top would be deeded to the town, so that would be the open space up that way. And then this area on the on lot 76 would be deeded to the developer. We'd do a swap of land. So again, I didn't see really any downside to it, and um, we, that I, I don't have any problem with the land swap. Any questions? So our total, what we would end up with would be about $7,800 plus the 5,000 square feet of land. Exactly. That's what we would, okay. Possibly taxes from a bigger, and taxes, and taxes from, from a bigger, bigger house. house. Okay. Yes, John. So, um, I'm not I'm not understanding the financing of this. So this this isn't a swap. It's a swap in sale. Yeah, a swap and char and we're we're uh, going to receive fund finance receive money for it too. So they're going to give us a little less than eight thousand dollars. Yep. Plus a five thousand square foot. Yes. Lot, and we're going to give them a $2,200 yes. lot. Yes, 20 square foot. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. N8. I move to approve the following property tax refunds as shown on agenda item N8. Second. Any questions? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. I move to adjourn to executive session to discuss matters concerning collective bargaining and that attendance in the executive session shall be limited to members of the town council and the town manager at 8.49 p.m. Second. All those in favor say aye. And the, the, the town aye. manager and the finance director? Um, no, they don't have to go. Okay. Yeah.